MediStand Understanding Medicine I am Professor Aziz Rahman and today we are going to talk about aplastic anemia. Those who have uh, landed up here directly, uh, I would like to inform you that this is a series of lectures on various types of anemias. We have already discussed some common principles, common approach to anemias, interpretation of CBCs and also the hypochromic microcytic anemias, macrocytic anemia and today we are going to talk about this aplastic anemia. Now as the name says it is the disorder of the bone marrow. The bone marrow becomes uh, non-functional or uh, it is destroyed by some other disease process mostly autoimmune so uh, as if there is no bone marrow so that is the kind of picture you will get in this condition now let's move on and uh, learn about this condition now this is an exercise uh, this is the picture of the patient and this is the normal values and if you have attended my earlier lecture on simple three-step approach uh, then first of all we'll see uh, you know that this the first thing we notice in the report is Hb and hematocrit in this case both Hb and hematocrit are less than normal these are the normal values a normal adult healthy person should have 12 to 18 grams of hemoglobin or 37 to 52 uh, uh, mcv or hct and both values are low indicating that this patient is anemic so in three step approach the first step we have already figured out this patient is anemic and in the second step we have to see the rbc's indices rbc morphology mcv mean corpuscular volume mch mean corpuscular hemoglobin and mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration now if you compare these values with the normal one in this case mcv is 82 and which pretty much falls within the normal range so this would be called normocytic picture and mch is 29 this also falls within the normal range so this would be referred to as normochromic so this is a, an anemia which is normochromic and normocytic and mchc uh, is 35 so this is the, within the normal limits again so you have anemia and significant anemia but rbc morphology is normal it is normocytic normochromic now in the three step approach the third step is to see the neutrophil part the, the white cell part please note down that the TLC is 3.2 which is reduced normal TLC is from 4 to 11 occasionally a normal healthy person can also have TLC of 3.2 but in this context somebody who is anemic I think this would be interpreted differently this would be uh, taken as a sign of bone marrow failure then rbc count is also reduced normally we have 4 to 5.5 million in both genders and this is clearly reduced platelets are also reduced so you have all three cell series reduced you have reduced white cells we have reduced rbcs we have reduced platelets so this would be called pancytopenia if you notice the ratio of polymorphs and lymphocyte is reversed normally we have about two-third to three-fourth number of cells are polymorphs and one-third to one-fourth are lymphocytes in this case the ratio is reversed now this point I would like to explain in some more detail this actually is slightly tricky because it is not absolute increase in lymphocyte it is actually the relative excess of lymphocytes because in DLC we just count any hundred cells since in this case polymorphs are reduced because polymorphs are made only in the bone marrow and we are talking about the bone marrow disorder polymorphs are reduced and lymphocytes are produced outside the bone marrow also so lymphocytes are not reduced or not reduced to that, that extent so for uh, when we do DLC uh, the relative 
count of lymphocyte is increased. Now, this point I am explaining because if you just go by increased lymphocyte count, you might actually reach a wrong conclusion of lymphocytic leukemia. But this TLC will tell you that TLC is reduced and platelet is also reduced. So this is actually a case of pancytopenia, not lymphocytic leukemia. Uh, although in leukemias, this picture can also develop, but mostly uh, this would suggest a plastic anemia. So the diagnosis is normochromic normocytic picture because all three indices are with the normal limit but it is anemia and this pancytopenia absence of all three cell lines in the body they are deficient that means it is pancytopenia that means it is a case of aplastic anemia uh, aplastic anemia is due to usually autoimmune phenomenon although we don't know for sure but um, mostly it is assumed to be it is uh, it is presumed to be uh, due to selective autoimmune destruction of RBC precursors. Uh, some immune modulating drugs may also reverse the disease, further strengthening this concept. You could call it idiopathic, but I think it is mostly autoimmune. Then bone marrow infiltration. If the bone marrow is infiltrated, uh, first I think by the bone marrow tissue itself. For example, there is a leukemia of uh, uh, myelocytes, le leukemia of lymphocytes, uh, or uh, there is uh, myelofibrosis, there is increase of fibrous tissue. All of these things can occupy the bone marrow and functional bone marrow will be reduced. So that is like, in because uh, although the bone marrow is cellular, but the bone marrow is occupied by the other non-bone marrow tissues. Similarly, some malignancy like breast cancer, carcinoma bronchus, prostate cancer, they can all infiltrate the bone marrow, reducing functional bone marrow. They will all cause similar picture. But most patients with pancytopenia would actually belong to this autoimmune uh, aplastic anemia. Uh, this is uh, the picture which will help to uh, understand why there is a reverse polylipho ratio. You know, this is hematopoietic stem cells. It differentiates into two main groups, the common lymphoid progenitor, lymphoblast, and these are produced in the lymph nodes as well as bone marrow. And common myeloid progenitor, myeloblast, and platelet precursors and RBC precursors, these are made in the bone marrow. Now, since this is more made extra medullary, uh, this has got extra medullary source also. So, in a typical case of aplastic anemia, disease of bone marrow, these three cell lines will be affected. You would have deficiency of erythrocyte resulting in anemia. You would have deficiency of platelet resulting in thrombocytopenia. And you would have deficiency of leukocytes, predominantly granular, because lymphocytes will be preserved and you know that that is why polys will be reduced. Eosinophils and basophils, monocytes, they will all be reduced in this case. So this is how we make the diagnosis of um, aplastic anemia. Uh, some basic facts about aplastic anemia. Uh, number one, it is the disorder of the bone marrow. Primarily bone marrow just fails to function. It may be structurally damaged or it may be immunologically suppressed or sometimes this bone marrow failure may be temporary reversible but mostly it is irreversible. Mostly it needs bone marrow transplantation or some other kind of treatment uh, but in some cases it may be reversible on its own or with some uh, immunosuppressant drugs. There are multiple causes mostly autoimmune and there is infiltration. The second commonest cause of aplastic anemia is infiltration of the bone marrow due to some known bone marrow tissue. I gave you the example of some malignancy. But remember, bone marrow may be infiltrated by the 
other non uh, 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 some other tissues like uh, this myelofibrosis the fibrosis takes over the bone marrow space it would cause in a typical form in typical uh, case it would cause deficiency of all three cell lines resulting in pancytopenia but there could be uh, all cell lines are not necessarily equally effective for some strange reasons but in majority of the cases in typical case you would have a deficiency of all three cell lines meaning there would be anemia there would be thrombocytopenia there would be reduction in white cell count also and there would be relative lymphocytosis uh, it is relative if you count the absolute lymphocyte count it may be normal or that also may be actually reduced but in the dlc lymphocytes will be increased uh, it is a quantitative defect that means rbcs are not produced in sufficient quantity but whatever rbcs are produced and released into the circulation they are of normal morphology they are normochromic and normocytic right uh, okay so that is it and diagnosis of aplastic anemia is very poss much possible on peripheral examination but usually it requires bone marrow examination now symptom would be the similar symptom of any anemia pallor but because of thrombocytopenia this patient might actually have purpura but usually there is no visceromegaly please note down that i am referring to the autoimmune type of aplastic anemia visceromegaly is usually not a feature there should be no hepatomegaly no splenomegaly no lymphadenopathy uh, in autoimmune aplastic anemia if there is a visceromegaly this would suggest secondary infiltration and this would suggest a diagnosis of lymphoma or leukemia or some other malignancy disseminated malignancy infiltrating into the bone marrow sometimes tuberculosis can also do that the picture would be normochromic normocytic and uh, usually uh, it is severe because uh, simply uh, the cells are not being produced in the bone marrow so typically patient would have severe anemia hb may be like 3 grams 4 grams uh, of course in some cases it may be uh, less reduced but i have seen cases with hemoglobin of 3 4 even 2 with aplastic anemia there is pancytopenia and polylipho ratio is reversed this point has already been discussed and bone marrow examination is very important because bone marrow is where the cells are made and it is important to uh, have the histological the tissue diagnosis in aplastic anemia and you we need to go for bone marrow examination now for youngsters and for those who are not well versed with this part uh, let me explain there are two types of bone marrow examination one is aspiration where you uh, put in a large bone needle into any bone typically a like bone in adults in children i think it's put in the uh, vertebrae uh, in the past it used to be in the sternum but nowadays we don't go in the sternum so it's a large bone needle and we go right into the bone marrow and we aspirate the bone marrow tissue uh, that is simple for the patient relatively less painful for the patient and also uh, less time consuming so that is the preferred test whenever we go for bone marrow examination but when we are suspecting aplastic anemia this aspiration biopsy may not be educated then we go for trifine biopsy in trifine biopsy there is a hollow needle and we actually uh, take a a part of bone marrow the compact part the cancellous bone part and the bone marrow so we take um, a, take out a cylinder of bone marrow along with the bone so that we can study it as a tissue so uh, if you are suspecting uh, aplastic anemia you might as well send a request to the hematologist to bo do bone marrow trifine biopsy not just the aspiration biopsy uh, because in aspiration you can't really be sure if the number of cells are adequate or not
these are clinical signs pallor of course is the fundamental sign of all anemias uh, you can see pale tongue pale skin uh, and then pale palms as compared to normal and you may also get these perplex spots and these small small punctate hemorrhages indicate thrombocytopenia and one big bruise is also a sign of uh, one of the possibilities is thrombocytopenia of course there are other causes uh, but thrombocytopenia would be one such cause and thrombocytopenia as a part of aplastic anemia uh, bone marrow examination site usually posterior alike crest and sternum but these days we do posterior alike crest because this site is chosen because this part remains active in hemopoiesis uh, in adults uh, so that part is chosen and then types of bone marrow aspiration and bone marrow trephine biopsy i've already explained the difference and in this case we'll go for bone marrow trephine biopsy this is the bone marrow aspiration uh, of course this place has to be uh, first sterilized then we have to inject local anesthesia then with sterilized technique you put in this big needle you see this is a fairly big strong needle and I will not describe that actual details of the procedure but with forceful suction we remove this bone marrow this is this is aspiration biopsy but in this case we'll take the the other type more or less procedure same the needle type is different and we uh, we remove the tissue not this uh, we don't suck the blood uh, this is the picture in the trephine biopsy biopsy this is the normal you can see very very cellular tissue this is bone and this is marrow and you can see very very small small dots these are actually different type of cells some are lymphocytes other neutrophils myeloblasts and some are megakaryocytes you can't really tell on this slide but these are all cells but you can really appreciate that whole marrow is whole, whole bone marrow is populated with uh, different types of cells but if you compare with this one this is all fat tissue you can see very few cells here and there few here few here but most of the bone marrow is occupied by the fat tissue this is a plastic anemia the classical chronic idiopathic a plastic anemia where you the bone marrow is replaced by the fatty tissue now let's do uh, this exercise we are discussing uh, the investigations of aplastic anemia some are very obvious but the other would need some uh, detailed discussion hemoglobin and hematocrit would be reduced of course this is a case of anemia and actually reduced to a very very significant extent hb may be three four uh, or even less mcv mch and mchc three indices this is mean corpuscular volume mean corpuscular hemoglobin and mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration all will be normal now this is interesting although there is anemia but all these three indices are normal because although rbcs are fewer in number but whatever rbcs this patient has it they are normal in morphology uh, they have normal amount of hemoglobin they have normal size and they have normal hemoglobin concentration TLC of course what do you guess TLC will be reduced maybe very low normal TLC is 4 to 11 in these patients depending upon the severity of disease it may be 3 4 uh, or maybe 2 2.5 even less than 2 like that and platelets are also reduced because this is actually a pan cytopenia a TLC is reduced platelets are reduced and HB and if you count uh, RBC they will also be reduced in differential diagnosis this point I have discussed earlier two times actually there would be a reverse polys and lympho ratio normally polys are in excess but in the DLC in this case lymphocyte will be more in number in the percentage wise 
rate account would be low because rate account reflects bone marrow activity in this case bone marrow activity is very very low and rate account will be low although that may not be of diagnostic value uh, of course if this patient has high rate account that would suggest an alternate diagnosis perhaps uh, something infiltrating into the bone marrow uh, in typical aplastic anemia autoimmune in nature rate count reticulocyte count is reduced and bone marrow examination is diagnostic you will have the aplastic picture as i just showed you you would have bone marrow which does not have many cells the treatment of aplastic anemia uh, blood transfusions is the perhaps not strongly recommended but very very commonly done because it makes simple common sense somebody has uh, not enough blood in the body and all cell lines are deficient it makes sense to give blood transfusion that is actually life saving for those patients who have very very low hb but it is recommended that if diagnosis is made early enough and patient is not very much anemic it is best not to give blood transfusion because if you give blood transfusion then that might actually uh, uh, cause formation of antibodies and bone marrow transplantation the stem cell transplantation later on might fail might fail so blood transfusion is a common practice in our country but if possible try to avoid blood transfusion but that will be possible only in those cases who can afford bone marrow transplantation and those who do not have very very severe anemia androgens because these are uh, growth factors they are sometimes used their efficacy is doubtful but they are uh, prescribed and then immunosuppressant drugs because auto this is autoimmune in most cases uh, immunosuppressant drugs they may really work and immunosuppressant drugs in various stages you could use steroids you could use cyclosporin as a thioprene or anti thymocyte globulin these are used uh, of course um, this then will lead to a clinical hematologist domain but you need to know that these are the drugs which are useful for the treatment of these patients then bone marrow transplantation or even better uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation so that is actually the treatment of choice if somebody can afford and if the facility for bone marrow transplantation and hematopoietic stem cell transplantation is available even if as a physician i don't do this but uh, i think it is an in interesting thing how to do it and i'm going to spend some time explaining how is this done and i think you could, uh, then handle these patient better uh there are two types one is allogenic the other is autologous or, or uh, allogenic means that that donor is another human being and autologous mean that the donor is the same person now somebody is planning to have a chemotherapy uh, and then one knows that this patient is going to develop bone marrow suppression as a result of chemotherapy patient can donate his own blood to be preserved and later transfused back so this is autologous then sources of bone marrow tissue may be bone marrow and that is the traditional the donor gives blood uh, the bone marrow typically uh, the donor has to undergo multiple uh, aspiration from multiple sites multiple puncture or it could be from the peripheral blood with the advanced technology a donor may give the peripheral blood and after giving growth factors these patients are given growth factors so that their bone marrow uh, pours out some uh, younger cells and some of that cells may be hematopoietic stem cells they are uh, captured they were harvested from the peripheral blood or amniotic fluid may be another source or the cord blood may be another source so in my uh, understanding best is perhaps a donor after growth factor the peripheral blood perhaps is the least uh, traumatic for the person
हेमेटोपोटिक स्टेम सेल टेक्निक सम बेसिक प्रिंसिपल द डोनर गिवस बोन मैरो और पेरिफर ब्लड और कॉड ब्लड देन इट हैज टू बी ए बी ओ एंड एच एल ए कंपेटेबल विद द रिसिपियंट then it is processed and irradiated why this donor tissue is irradiated because we want to kill all those cells which are immunopotent and immunocompetent because if they are not killed they can actually uh, generate an Im immune response against the recipient uh, so i think this is interesting and the bone marrow tissue is irradiated and then processed and then infused to the recipient the recipient just receives bone marrow transplantation in the form of intravenous infusion then the recipient is given different uh, granulocyte stimulating factors growth factors to promote this uh, the graft and then you of course need to monitor how well the graft has taken so this is the the theory behind hematopoietic stem cell transplantation of course difficult technique but luckily it is now available in our country also the complications of uh, this disease and this treatment of course since this patient has got a uh, deficiency of white cells also these patients are prone to get infections sometime infection may be actually the presenting problem and then if these patients are treated with multiple blood transfusion and blood products they might end up having volume overload iron overload no iron overload is also a common complication of repeated blood transfusion transmission of infection and isoimmunization that means after blood transfusion patient will develop antibodies uh, against uh, bone marrow tissues so that is why uh, it is it is recommended that blood transfusion should be avoided if you can uh, if you can uh, guess that this patient is likely to receive the bone marrow transplantation or hematopoietic cell transplantation uh, then the complications of bone marrow transplantation rejection is self explanatory every organ once transplanted can be rejected by the immune response by that the recipient or a very interesting phenomenon called graft versus host disease this is actually a rejection of the recipient by the transfused immunocompetent cells that is why uh, if you remember i mentioned this this the sample the the, the donated sample is actually irradiated to kill these immunocompetent cells then some other complication then there could be late complication uh, those patients who have received bone marrow transplantation they could have this uh, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin urea and myelodysplastic syndrome but on the whole bone marrow transplantation or hematopoietic cell transplantation is actually very good and is the only hope for these patients prognosis of aplastic anemia poor with conservative approach conservative approach means giving repeated blood transfusion initially when we give transfusion there is very good response but as we repeat transfusions because of development of uh, isoimmunization many cells are broken down hemolyzed so uh, with every new transfusion there is less and less response improved with immunotherapy uh, i have seen few patients who have really really improved with uh, immunotherapy and they are actually normalized and best prognosis is possible with bone marrow transplantation or the hematopoietic stem cell transplantation so that was aplastic anemia and thank you very much for bearing with me uh, i think this was uh, Uh, one of the uh, long series of lectures on anemias uh, i hope i was able to give you some basic concepts about aplastic anemia the diagnosis and the treatment and we are going to continue with some other types like hemolytic anemias uh, so please stay tuned and join me in my forthcoming videos this is professor azizur rahman from medistan thank you